Hello, my guys. Hello, my ladies. Thank you for being with me. Today's video, I am going to break down the different types of scholarship you can get to study in the United States. Okay. But before we dive into that video, I've got some few lyrics I just want to share with you. Okay. So take your pen and book. To write these lyrics because at the end of this video we are going to sing the song okay now few questions if coming to the united states was an as easy especially as a student if coming to the united states was as easy as x raised to the power zero i mean <laughs> what do you think would have been the situation here in terms of the population okay so it means that everybody who has ever yearned to come to the united states would have been here by now right sure 90 percent you would agree with me that this place would have been would have been <laughs> would have been filled long ago and the reason why I'm bringing this to you, I want you to take your study abroad journey as something as important as anything. You know, at times I have observed people treat their study abroad journey as a part-time thing. I'm not saying you should take off all other jobs and just focus on your study abroad journey. But what I want to translate or what I want to convey is that it's a process the first thing starts with the mindset you need to have a plan and the next two years maximum i need to go to the united states and do my studies that's the mindset now the readiness i am ready to do that and whatever is going to happen it doesn't it doesn't matter i am going to achieve that so with that in mind next before giving you the next point i just want to bring this again or well, let me just go straight the next thing is to find out go to the basics what are the things required forget about scholarship for now what are the things required for me to be accepted to the university of my dream? And of course, what are these things? Your documents are key. Okay? Not just that. I need to know the process that are involved. So go back to the basics. You don't want to just see an opportunity, let's say a scholarship, actually the ones that we are advertising. Okay, the ones that we are putting on our YouTube channels and any other platform, and just jump straight to the university website. Some of us even find it difficult to navigate the university website. And I have made videos on that. That's so why if you are a subscriber to my channel or you've looked at some of my videos, most of my videos I tend to go, not that I want them to be longer, but because I can't be a like I know how difficult it is for some people so i try to explain things to the to the level i think to the basics that you'll be able to understand you'll be able to navigate through the university website so what i was saying you need to know what is involved your documents do you have the correct document do i have the perfect cv am i using the same cv that i have used to apply for jobs or those petty things i'm using it again for admission because the cv for admission universities in the us don't just look at maybe your work experience they look at all facets including your extracurriculum activities your leadership your um social interaction which are just maybe part of your extracurriculum activities Okay, now you have minor things that you may not see as important, which are very much important when it comes to you being accepted to any university within the US. 
because they look at everything holistically. So that's it. You need to know what is involved in getting admitted or in getting admission to a U.S. university or the university of your dream. Now you have the mindset, you have the readiness. Now you are finding the ideas. Okay, I need to get, I need to be able to write the perfect CV. I need to have idea on how to write, how to answer questions involving personal statement or statement of purpose or letter of intent. It depends. I don't want to dive deep into that because one thing, but let me just say something quickly. One thing I do see and that is so ridiculous is that people saying this is the way you should draft um, a personal statement or a statement of purpose. For me, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying I see it ridiculous because it's more like questioning. It's more like questions and answer. That's how personal statements and statements of purpose looks like. So, I guess the most important thing is for you to be able to understand the question and formulate a perfect answer that fits that question. And once you have that in your mind, you will never be scared of writing a personal statement because universities will never ask you just to write a personal statement as vague as anything. They will give you specific questions you need to answer. Why do you choose our university? Why do you want to pursue your program? And at this point, you need to find answers to these questions that you should be able to draft a perfect personal statement or statement of purpose. So for instance, if you ask, why do you choose the university? You need to have reasons. Do your homework well. Go back to the university and look for things that interest you. Add them to your personal statement. So I don't want to dive deep into the personal statement. So now, what I was saying, have the mindset, readiness, know what is involved for you to be admitted, your writing samples, know how to write them, or I mean, know how to answer questions because every university, every personal statement should be addressed based on the university's need, based on the questions being asked. Okay? So now, let me run you through. You have documents ready. You know what is involved. You know how to respond to emails because emailing again is very key. Okay. How for you to be able to reach out to graduate coordinators if you're a graduate student. Okay. I know for most of the undergraduates, except you are that matured enough. For most times, we do have people that guide us. Okay. So now, let me just break down quickly so this video won't be very very long let me just break down quickly the different types of scholarship you are going to get okay as a potential student first and foremost you have what we call the automatic scholarship or we call them merit-based scholarship okay automatic scholarship we have different category. Automatic scholarship, first of all, these are scholarship that does not require any application, any different application other than the one you apply, the one you use to apply for admission. What am I saying? If you apply to a university like where I am, it means that the admission officials or the department head that application that you have made which they will use to assess you in order for you to be admitted will, that same application will be used for you to get the automatic scholarship okay now under the automatic scholarship you have what you call merit based scholarship this is based on your performance merit as you have had merit based scholarship based on your performance and it's Performance in the sense does not only mean your academic performance, I mean like your GPA. Okay, so many other things involved, which I don't want to uh, go into. Now, the other ones we call need based scholarship. Need based as well, it means okay, based on maybe your geography, um, 
your location rather okay maybe okay there is this particular scholarship that is within the university that who whosoever if you are from let's say from caribbean or from africa if you are an african student you apply to this particular university and once you get admitted you'll be considered for that particular scholarship so you don't need a separate application for it so it's based on your location okay now that's those are just basic thing basic um the two i can remember now as automatic scholarships so you don't need any further application now for the most part and most important thing especially for us as graduate students i mean like masters one thing most often you see like in our videos we do say fully funded scholarship now let me tell you how you get fully funded scholarship to come to study here in fact it is not even free that's one thing it is only a fellowship that you get you don't have to work for but once you hear someone saying i got five fully funded scholarship to come to us they are going to work for it now as international student of us most of us know that when you are in the us you are you are obligated to work only 20 hours maximum so now what happens universities have what we call assistantship positions it's either teaching assistantship research assistantship or administrative assistantship now the teaching assistantship it means that you are going to teach a particular module within the department and those are departmental funding opportunities so what happens in the exchange of your knowledge the university is going to give you a stipend and takes off the burden of you having to pay tuition fee so that's it now the other one a research assistantship you are going to work with a particular professor and in most cases those who are given a teach, uh, research assistantship they need to have someone who is who whose interests aligns with theirs i mean like if i'm coming in as a civil engineer i need to have specifically let's say structures i need to have someone within the department that is interested in structures and not just structures but a particular area that interests me as well so when you come you work with that person you are going to find out about something based on a particular research so in the exchange of that so you have your own job maybe you do it like every four uh, i mean like four hours every um every day okay you'll be with the professor you go to the lab and do something okay so in the exchange of that you are going to have again stipend and your tuition fee is going to be waived now the last one administrative assistantship that one it does not only apply to the department you can do it almost every um uh, within the university as a whole it means that so you go as, as as an international student maybe you'll be given like the responsibility to respond to other international students as well through emails you know as ambassador okay you'll be answering certain things you just be doing just like office jobs minor things maybe just type in documents and all of that okay so these three are the main ones you see us writing fully funded scholarship fully funded scholarship and these are basically i mean like for international students because like for domestic you have like they will say need base where you just have to fill in uh even international students some universities especially for undergraduate students you fill in what we call the css profile okay while for domestic students they fill in the fafsa okay so for that in that case and in case again first for, <laughs> what they look at in terms of the CSS full file um is that um you have so many documentation to provide i mean like so many documents okay you have to provide as well because they need to know how much your your parent and and all of that to determine how much money you're going to get okay so if you have been hearing people saying that i got fully funded scholarship I got fully fledged scholarship now but there is another one which you call the greater position but that one most often most often 
you only get some money but it's not like fully funded as the ta research and the three ones i have just mentioned okay so most often even when you get automatic scholarship what i would advise you to do and you don't get teaching assistantship or research assistantship or administrative assistantship try to reach out to the department requesting for greater position okay and what would that do for you apart from the money you are going to get if you can get greater position before even leaving your country how is that going to help you you will tell your i20 manager okay your international office for them to include that or as on a campus job in your um i20 and you know that's going to help you as well because the consultants will look at it and say okay the university actually needs this student because look at him he's here and he has already been given a position so you see which is why no matter how small the amount of money you're going to get from a particular university it is important at least for you to get some partial funding because you don't want it to sound as if the university just say okay we need this student after all we are going to get money from him or her let's just give him or her admission letter but once you are given some funding it shows that the university either you are a smart student or you have done something um extraordinary or just something that has given the university the zeal for them to give you that particular amount of money so in a summary make sure you have the mindset the readiness and know the basics know the things well have a book have a book in your study abroad journey so you know you have a timetable don't just wake up from your bed let me just look at this uni university and apply have a plan plan your study imagine someone is living your dream life right now like you want to be in the u.s enjoying you know you have those imaginations for you to bring that is not easy we are living in a competitive world you think your profile <laughs> is as good as anything but there are people who have one <laughs> who have work experience for how many years they have good gps they have good leadership so if you are there thinking your gpa is enough then think again okay but by and large make sure you treat your study abroad journey as serious as anything and this involves you getting the right documents go back to the basics don't rush things know how to navigate very well take your time and surely all the energy all that effort will surely pay off one day only quitters are losers remember that bye bye see you again in my next video if you've learned anything from this video all you have to do is to be part of this channel okay and be sure to subscribe share this video to other viewers out there who may be interested in the same content see you again bye bye for now